Minions have been buffed tremendously. We are going to be sacrificing the golem this time around and we are focusing on the mages. So this is going to be a different playstyle than before, where before you had to rely on your golem to carry you and your minion damage. Whereas now we are going to actually rely on our skeletal mages, whereas these are going to be proccing Ring of Mandeln, which has been buffed tremendously and you are also going to call in even more friends with the spirit wolves which are also not only proccing vulnerable and chill but they're also leaping and very important they proc ring of mandolin too with the release of season six i have updated the minion necromancer end game build guide as i said we are going to go skeletal mages this time around and a crowd favorite ring of mandolin is actually going to make it into the build because because it is actually scaling with minion damage now. So every time you're going to have something like skeletal mages or golem damage, for example, that is also going to scale the effect of Ring of Mandolin. If you prefer a written version, the macro link is going to be down in the description below. And here you are going to get a lot of information in written form. Here you can see the season theme. You can have a mythic version of the skill variant. If you are looking to level with minions, that's also available on max roll, for example. And then we will also have a paragon section, which is going to show you ideally how to path, not only at the start, but it's also going to hold your hand and get you up to speed up to even paragon level 300 and you can easily uh, slide this slider right here around depending on how far you are actually progressing with your character then you will have the glyph leveling priorities which glyphs to level to 15 first which one you want to have to level 46 right after you will also have a runes section and as i already said we are actually using the spirit wolves which are going to help us proc ring of mandeln and we are also um, having alternative choices in case you don't have a certain rune so far then again we do have the optimal mercenary setup that is going to help you tremendously increase your damage because right here brings quite a lot of damage multipliers that are going to be extremely helpful and then very important here we do have the stat priorities and item progression section here in chapter 6 which has an upgraded look and you can also see which items you should be going for, which part of the item to masterwork crit and much more important than that, which stats to go for on a specific item. For example, on the gloves, you want grasping veins and then in order from top to bottom, you want ranks to skeletal mage mastery down to maximum life. And you can also instantly spot the tempers that you need to put on your gloves, for example. Another new feature are the item progression goals where for example you can see depending on how far your character currently is in the starter version you can check off which of the aspects you currently already have so you can at a glance instantly spot which aspect to go for next and that obviously also helps you in the ancestral version where we are also introducing the unique so you can check them off when you have acquired those and we also have that for the mythic version where the aspects are going to be a little bit um, fewer, but obviously the uniques are going to be increased. In my opinion, a very helpful uh, section right here that you can have open on your second screen all the time and then tick off the items that you find, the aspects that you find, so you can actually check your progress and track how far into the build guide you actually are. Also, our tried and true build variants for example, the starter ancestral mythic speed farm and pit pushing variant where you can actually progress your character through the whole game. Ideally, you start out on the starter board as it already says, and then you can actually read up on what you need to do, where to make small changes in case something is not working that well. And then as soon as you start outgrowing the starter variant, you just bump it up a notch to the ancestral. And then if you are reaching the mythic level, you can do that one more time. Very important here is the FAQ section where you can actually read up on what stats improve minions, how to reset your cooldowns faster. And we also have a big mechanic section where you can read up on lucky hit chance, attack speed caps, which is going to be extremely important for the minion necromancer and also the stagger. But let's get into the build. We are running Ring of Mandeln and the idea behind Ring of Mandeln is that every sixth attack from 
Each minion, the wording is important here, is empowered, exploding in a very small radius for physical damage. So obviously you want to create as many attacks as possible so you can cash in on the proc as often as possible. Therefore, we are stacking a lot of attack speed and using frenzied dead on our ring while also having the natural attack speed cap of 100% for our minions. But the frenzied dead actually goes into a second cap so you can actually go above 100% attack speed, which then obviously tremendously increases the amount of Ring of Mendel procs that you can generate. That's not even enough procs. We are going for chance for skeletal mage attacks to cast twice on our weapon as a temper. So you increase the amount of attacks and therefore also the amount of procs that your Ring of Mandel is going to generate by quite a lot. And this time we are actually using the Shadow Mages Fire and Additional Shadow Bolt every three attacks upgrade on the Shadow Mages. So as you can see right here, tons of attack speed, tons of procs and a lot of damage coming from your skeletal mages. But that's not all of it. On the weapon, you not only increase the casts with the skeletal mages, but you're also playing the rune word Buck Tse, which is going to give you a spirit wolf every time you travel 10 meters. Since you're playing a minion build, you will be running around all the time anyway, spawning a lot of spirit wolves and they actually count to your minion pool, therefore also proccing Ring of Mental. We will have a very easy time of hitting the crit cap because we are playing Grasping Veins on the glove. Unfortunately, the 50% damage multiplier for critical strike damage does not apply to our minions, but we need the 25% critical strike chance that Grasping Veins provide to actually get crit capped. And while we are crit cap, we are, as I said earlier, sacrificing our golem, which is going to give us a huge 35% damage multiplier. With so many skeletal mastery passive points on our gear, we can actually get up to 20 skeletal mage mastery very easily. As you can see right here, this is actually a 400% damage multiplier for our mages, incredibly increasing the damage that we can deal and this does not work with your Ring of Mendeln, but very important here is that everything that counts as minion damage, so very, for example the skeletal mage damage on our glove, the temper right here, or also the temper on our rings and also the amulet, as well as the skeletal mage damage on our weapon, they now all count as additive damage into your Ring of Mandel. So the additive damage value of your summons, so for example, the 40% right here, the 262.6%, and also the 725% damage, now scale the effect of Ring of Mandel, making it so much better. For the Paragon board, it's extremely important for you to know that there are also multiple variants that are going to hold your hand during the progression of your character. You would start out with all boards, all glyphs level 15 right here, and then you could also progress up your character every time you are getting like 50 more paragons for example you can bump it up a notch and very important here as I said earlier we do have the glyph leveling priorities available to you on the written max roll guide so you can actually know which glyphs to level when so you can actually squeeze out the absolute most amount of damage out of your character for the level 15 it's very easy you just follow the boards so you're gonna go essence dead razor amplify eliminator and exploit and then when you are trying to figure out which ones to go for for level 46, I suggest you uh, check out the list that is in the written build guide on the backstroll site, which is again linked down in the description below. If you are a minion enjoyer or you have held off with playing minions to begin with, then this is the season for you. Not only are you going to have as many minions as possible together with your spirit wolves, but you are also proccing Ring of Mandeln as often as possible, creating a lot of damage, especially in single target scenarios where all of your minions attack the exact same target. So if you're looking for a crazy bosser, for example, to carry your friends, this is going to be an amazing build. And I'm very much looking forward to actually try this out in the Dark Citadel, where single target damage is going to be paramount. If you like content similar to this, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.